Hello coders, I'm Adam and this is Ghost of Coders. Today we're doing one of my favorite things to do on this, a code challenge on code signals. Let's get started. We're going to be doing the house robber problem today on code signal, newly rebranded from code fights. So I'm going to start by reading you the problem right off of their website. This is a medium code signal challenge worth 3000 gold. You are planning to rob houses on a specific street and you know that every house on that street has a certain amount of money hidden. The only thing stopping you from robbing all of them in one night is that adjacent houses on the street have a connected security system. The system will automatically trigger an alarm if two adjacent houses are broken into on the same night. Given a list of non-negative integers called nums representing the amount of money hidden in each house, determine the maximum amount of money you can rob in one night without triggering an alarm. So an example would be, let's say we have three houses and they're worth one, one, one. We should be returning the number two. And you should be able to see that right on your screen. Um, let's see here. Anything else that's important? You know, we have our normal limit, and I'm going to be doing this in JavaScript. We're going to be doing this hopefully fairly quickly. I'm going to preface this by saying my first solution almost got to the very end, but it didn't quite meet the time requirements of the very last hidden test. Very disappointed in that. But before we're going to do that, I'm going to still talk to you about that solution, because to me, that's one of the more fun ones. Um, and as you may know, I love algorithms. So let's get into how my first approach went. So given, let's say we've got five houses here, the first thing that we know is that every time we get to a house, we have an option. We can either rob it or we can walk right by it. So when I start immediately looking at this problem, I start thinking about doing a greedy or dynamic programming uh, problem with this. So what I wanna do is like, I, I don't know which one's better, so I'm gonna try both, right? So in a, in a greedy algorithm, we're going to do that all. With dynamic programming, we're going to cache some of that data. We're going to use memoization to actually store that so we don't have to keep doing repeated work. So we would start by, our option here is to skip it or rob it. Let's say we rob it. We rob it, and we now know that the next house to it, we can't rob. So we have to skip this. So we rob, skip, rob, skip, rob. Does that make sense? So the value of this would be three in this situation. But let's say we skip the first one. We go to two, we rob it, we have to skip the next one. Now we can rob the next one or we, in theory, could skip it because, but if we skip it, we're also um, going to change the pattern down here. So just keep that in mind as you're working through your code. But for the sake of this demo, we're gonna say, we're gonna rob the value of two, skip the one, rob the value of two here, with a value of four. So the answer of this one is I can, I can steal basically four dollars or four something, whatever that value would actually represent if I rob these two houses and no alarm would be triggered. All right, so I'm gonna start a time lapse of the code that I wrote for my first solution. And while that's happening, I'm gonna talk to you about the approach that I was taking. All right, we're jumping into the code now. I start by creating a cache array. I create it already the length of the numbers that have been passed in and I fill it with zero. So we already need to allocate a block of memory there. So then I'm going to move into creating a recursive function. I only really need one parameter and that's the current location that we're working with. And we're going to be thinking about this in um, the index maybe isn't the right term, but maybe it would be like offset would be a better one or size or something like that. Um, but at the time I wasn't really thinking about that. So anyway, I did name the first index, um, the first parameter index. And you can see that initially I jump into just writing two options. So option one would be, we are going to rob this house, which means we have to at least go, we can't do the next house. We need to go to the one before that. And option two, we are going to skip that house, which means that we're going to just call the rob function again with just moving the index one or the position one. I then have to revisit back and add a couple things like, 
you know, if our index is zero, we need to return the number zero. If the cache has already got a value stored in it, we want to return that cache value instead. That cache value is basically the maximum value between what's returned from the robbed and the skipped. And really, the way this function should work is I should only need to call it one time with just the length of the array passed in. You can see I had to work back and forth in my head a little bit around like indexing and whatnot. But actually, this one came together really smooth, really fast, and a few little minor errors, and I was already passing all the um, sample test. But when I hit submit, it failed on the last one. And you can see that I get out of, I go through some desperate moments here before I realize that I've got to come up with a new solution. And I've tried submitting it three or four times, and I really, truly believe that this one should have worked. I think it might just be hitting that threshold of that four seconds at the very end. And maybe there's something that you can post in the comments below. Maybe I missed something, and there's some sort of optimization here that I'm just not seeing. And I would love to hear that. But that's my first solution. Ultimately, it didn't work for JavaScript due to that final hidden test, which I was even debating on unlocking just to see what it looked like. All right, now we're going to move over to my second thing that I wanted to try. And this is basically still going to use cache, but it's going to try to do this in a loop so nothing's happening recursively. In theory, with memoization, you should be able to replicate similar results by doing a for loop. So I end up giving up. I end up saying like, I'm gonna have to go and come up with another solution. So I go to a solution that is going to be non-recursive, but still use dynamic programming. And again, I'm gonna start by creating a cache object that I fill in exactly like I did in the previous solution. I then move over to initialize the first two objects of the cache. The first object of the cache is just going to be number one. The second object of the cache is going to be numbers, um, and I guess if you think about it from indexes, zero and one, whichever one of those is larger. Then I jump into a for loop that just calculates the max between if I skip it and if I rob it. And I basically, by the end, I should have the largest value that I could steal in the very last index of my cache. I did run into some problems here and it was a really dumb problem because in my mind I had put the right information in there but in the end I hadn't left it out. So I stumble around, I try a few things but it ended up being I had forgot the skipped part in the math.max statement in the for loop. So I couldn't for a while figure out why it wasn't working, but ultimately this solution um, got through all the test cases, and when I hit submit, it passed the time. I still wish my first solution would have worked, and I still think it's fun for you guys to be able to see both cases, one that was so close to getting through, and I had to come back and revisit everything and come up with a brand new solution that was similar, yet different enough that would actually pass. I'd be willing to bet that if you took a different language and you took my first solution, that it would probably pass. And I'd love to hear that from you if you end up doing something similar. Again, don't just copy the code that I wrote. Go in, learn from it, try to understand um, how, that, how you would do it. And I would actually recommend you tackling the problem first before you even try to look at a solution. I had a ton of fun today. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Please let me know below if you want me to keep doing more of these. Anyway, that's my solution to the house robber problem on CodeSignal. Check back tomorrow for more fun topics related to programming. 
Anyway, keep coding, coders. <laughs>